Hi there, another day, another light bulb from Dollar Tree here in the United States. Uh, here we have a Sunbeam warm white LED light bulb. This was of course one dollar, came from the Dollar Tree. I did find out that here in Oregon there are energy company subsidies, even at Dollar Tree. So this bulb is, may not be available in your area if you do not have subsidies available to you. Uh, this bulb claims to be 9 watt actual and 800 lumens, so typical for a 60 watt bulb. But very interesting right off the bat is it does say suitable for enclosed fixtures. It probably means that the power supply module in here has 125 degree centigrade capacitors on it because most of these are not suitable for enclosed fixtures and that's because the heat kills the power supply in the bulb. The bulb's rated for 25,000 hours, so pretty typical, medium base, so that means an Edison uh, E26. And the brand is Sunbeam. You may never have heard of it. This company has been around for quite a while in the U.S., at least the brand name. They make things like blenders and kitchen appliances and stuff like that. I really don't know that the company that makes this has anything to do with the original Sunbeam Corporation. They probably just bought the brand name and are capitalizing on the old good name of that company. This bulb has a three-year warranty, so that's kind of nice. And here's the address of the company, so a city of industry that's in Los Angeles, California. And it sounds like you still need your original receipt, so you can get your $1 back, or at least you get a replacement bulb for your $1 if you send it in. Again here under the warnings and cautions it does mention that it's suitable for enclosed fixtures. Definitely says not for use with dimmers so don't bother trying to dim this and only good for 120 volts 60 hertz circuits. It also says it's suitable for damp locations. Something else that's interesting is and it's something you don't readily see in cheap light bulbs is that this uh, light bulb appears to be FCC certified and it mentions here that it can interfere with communication equipment between 65 and 130 kilohertz. That's likely to do to the switching frequency of the power supply in this bulb. It also lists it as UL listed. So we're talking two major certifications here. So this is actually probably going to be a pretty well constructed or at least a safe bulb. And according to the label here, this is distributed in Canada. So you may also find this bulb. On the other side of the box, just the typical stuff here. Cool to the touch, non-dimmable, indoor, outdoors. And our nutritional facts, I mean lighting fact page here, shows the usual 800 lumens. And this bulb appears to be rated at 3000K. Let's take a look at the bulb inside. Right off the bat, the bulb construction is very light. Plastic here for the housing. Plastic here for the envelope. Seemingly well constructed, but light, probably quite durable. You could drop this bulb without any issue of worry about it breaking. Let's see how the bulb looks powered up. Ah yes, the usual 60 hertz uh, visual flicker that you get with the camera. So, visibly I don't really see any flicker from this bulb. It's pretty good, but you can clearly see there is some modulation from the 60 Hz uh, line frequency here in the United States. Most likely you'll never notice this in person though. If you move your eyes across the bulb quickly, it looks like it's on pretty much solidly. Power consumption seems to be about 7 or 8 watts on my kilowatt, which is not too bad actually. So it was rated for 9 watts. Looking at the power factor, 0.7, not terrible, but not great. If you saw a typical capacitive dropper type bulb, it would probably be lower than that. But if you saw a really good quality bulb with some additional power factor correction circuitry inside, it would be closer to 1.0, which of course is the best possible power factor. Power factor doesn't really matter though when you're talking about home consumer use. Unless you are running uh, your house off a generator, then you would worry more about power factor. But at this point, it's really a non-issue. I did use this light in one of my light fixtures upstairs and it's not too bad actually. The color temperature is a little cooler than I like. I like a little closer to 2700K but the light output is pretty good. I'd say one of my biggest complaints it's a little bit low on the red output part of the spectrum but that's pretty typical for these types of LEDs. Light distribution is decent although you definitely get more light shining out of the top. When you look at the envelope while it's turned on it looks pretty even but if you just look at your lamp you don't have a lot of light coming out of the shade in this direction. And if you compare that to a standard incandescent bulb, where well, you definitely get light coming out of this part of the bulb here, you know, this thing ends right there. So, you know, looking looking this direction, look how much of the light is visible, you know, the look how much of the bulb is visible here at this view, just this little bit here, compared to this incandescent bulb, where you see quite a bit more of it, and all of this would be shooting light in this direction versus this, which you only have this little bit of light. But of course, compared to an incandescent bulb, that's one of the nice things. You can do this to it, 
and absolutely nothing happens. In fact, even with it turned on, you can drop it and nothing happens at all. If I put this incandescent bulb into this light fixture and I turned it on and I dropped it like that, it would definitely break. It might survive if it dropped at this height while it was turned off, but turned on, the filaments become much more fragile. So if you have a shop light and you keep breaking bulbs, put one of these in there. And you definitely just do not have to worry about it breaking any longer. From a heat perspective, there's nothing much to report. The bulb gets hot in this section here while it's running for a long time. Pretty typical to all of these bulbs. You aren't really able to touch that part of the bulb uh, after it's been on for a while because it's so hot unless you use gloves. But, of course, you can just grab it from this part of the plastic here, which is completely cool to the touch even after it's been running. Looking at the labels on the bulb, nothing much to report here. 9 watts, 800 lumens, 120 volts, 135 milliamps at 3000K. Has a, has a model number. There's the UL listing number that I talked about with the registration number. Made in China, of course. It goes on to talk about the fact that it's not for use in dimmable fixtures, but it is okay to use this in damp locations and inside totally enclosed fixtures. So once again, like I said, pretty good ratings. Let's open this up and take a look inside. All right, well, I think which is typical with UL approved bulbs because of a safety issue, this wasn't super easy to take apart. What I did is I took my knife here and I just sort of wedged it in along the edge and cracked the glue. And then I just took a screwdriver and I pried it in and then it popped out. Uh, it's decent construction though, it has a good amount of glue on there and it has a lip as well, so that holds it back on. So even after you've taken this off once, like I have, I could probably easily snap this back together. Well here we have the circuit board. What's really cool is there are 16 LEDs on this board. Because this is using about 8 watts, each LED on this board here is only dissipating about half a watt each. The lower current per chip, the better. Now as you can see, two board construction, although it's simple, it doesn't use a connector or any type, it's basically just they push fit this on and there's two solder blobs here that hold the two boards together. Looking at the markings here, we have LC-LED and we actually have a little chip on here. Let me see if I can read what that says. The chip says BP5131H. I'm going to have to take a look to see what that does exactly. But otherwise on the board we have a couple passives and that's essentially it. Right off the bat, I can see that the board is metal backed and is resting up against the metal heat sink that's behind this plastic here. And that's what's transferring the heat away from this board and onto the housing. Okay, I'm going to short across one of the chips. It's too bright for me to show on the camera, but if I turn on the light, we're getting about 57 milliamps. Okay, now we're going to check for voltage across the entire board. Wow, this is interesting. We're getting 151 volts across the entire board. Okay, now I'm checking the voltage across one of the LED modules, and we're at about 9 volts. So 9 volts per module would imply there's actually three LED chips in each of these LEDs. Comes out to about 144 volts to the entire module, which is close enough. It's not pushing these LEDs very hard, which is probably explains why they're approving it for use in closed fixtures. All right, when we look inside the bulb, that's where quality breaks down a little bit. Um, this is the main circuit board here, and it was just sitting inside of this housing, and there's absolutely no thermal compound anywhere on here. This is a metal back circuit board, so that's nice, but the tight fit is all it's going to have for heat transfer. Now, this did get pretty warm, so there obviously was heat transfer taking place. This elastic compound that was on here has a double function of holding the circuit board in and also holding the envelope on. Uh, the bottom here is just pretty run of the mill, it's just press fit on and there's a little pin and the two wires kind of are crimped onto there and just held on. So nothing, nothing's fancy. There is obviously no potting compound inside of this and this just weighs nothing. Now what's interesting here is we have this board and we took a look at it already on the top, but when we look at the bottom I've desoldered this, this just sort of comes out like that and slots off. Look at this bottom board, this is it, this is all that's on here. Uh, we have a fuse here on, in line with the power leads. We have a filter cap and we have a bridge rectifier and we have one passive. And that's it. That is it. Uh, this capacitor is rated 105. It's a generic brand. Uh, 200 volts, 10 microfarad. So what's interesting is that rectified DC goes directly into this board and because there's 16 of these LED modules and each one has three chips in it, this requires 144 volts to drive the whole circuit at a reasonable amount of current. And this is obviously just some type of current regulator that brings down and dissipates a little bit of heat into the board uh, to drive these directly, essentially, off of our 120 volts mains here. 
it's pretty ingenious. Um, and I have to say the low component count probably results in decent longevity. This capacitor may not get too hot considering it's sort of floating inside of here relatively far away from everything right in the middle. So that might last a decent amount of time. And because there's so many LEDs and each one has three chips, each one of these modules are being driven at about half a watt each. And you course divide that by three and you're talking a very little amount of power per chip here. If you look for really cheap bulbs that are designed for the 220, 240 volt markets, they often just use capacitive droppers and that's it. That doesn't really work in the US very well, so I haven't yet seen any of the cheap bulbs use that technique. They all use much more complicated switching power supplies or other methods. This is the first time I've seen a bulb in the US that takes AC and just rectifies that into unregulated DC and sends that directly into this board here with just one single chip. The number of parts to make this work is very low, so that should help with reliability. The only thing I think that would really help this is maybe a little bit better heat sinking to the base. Uh, the one negative is you don't have any dimming capability of this board, but I don't think a lot of people care about that so much anymore. And if you're talking about cost reduced and reliability, this is one way to do it. All right, well, anyway, there we go. Um, I definitely think this is a pretty good bulb. I'm giving it a thumbs up myself. For a $1 bulb, I would be happy to put this in my house personally. And uh, yeah, if you found this interesting, I would appreciate a thumbs up on the video. You can subscribe for more videos and uh, put comments in the comment section down below. And of course, check out my other videos on bulb teardowns as well. I seem to go to Dollar Tree and whenever I see a bulb there, I will buy it and I will immediately tear it down so you guys can see what they're made out of inside to know if they're any good and worth buying. Thanks for watching. Bye.